The story of the Titanic has always been about its collision with an iceberg, right? But what if that's not the whole truth? Picture this, a Titanic survivor, tears in their eyes, shockingly claims the iceberg did not destroy the ship. This bold statement challenges everything we know. In this video, we'll explore 10 eye-opening points that might just rewrite the history of the Titanic. Are you ready to dive into these hidden depths? Let's uncover the real story together. Number 1. Terrifying Explosion Theory The Titanic, a symbol of human engineering prowess, met a tragic end in 1912, an event etched in history largely due to its collision with an iceberg. However, a startling alternative theory proposed by survivor Vogan Barrett casts a shadow of doubt on this widely accepted cause. Barrett's assertion of an explosion being the real culprit behind the Titanic's demise presents a chilling twist to the tale. This theory gains support from accounts of other survivors who reported hearing loud, unexplained noises that fateful night. What makes this explosion theory particularly compelling is its potential to reframe our understanding of the disaster. The general belief has been that the iceberg's impact caused the Titanic to sink. However, if an explosion occurred, it shifts the focus from an external force of nature to a possibly preventable internal malfunction or sabotage. The implications of this are profound as it suggests negligence or overlooked safety measures could have played a significant role in the tragedy. Further supporting this theory is the fact that the Titanic, despite its grandeur, faced several issues during its construction. The shipbuilding process was fraught with accidents and incidents, raising questions about the overall integrity and safety of the vessel. If an explosion did occur, it could have been the result of structural weaknesses, faulty machinery, or even mishandled materials on board. This explosive claim demands a re-examination of the Titanic's final hours. While the iceberg collision remains the primary narrative, Barrett's testimony and corroborating survivor accounts introduce a harrowing possibility. That the ship's fate was sealed not just by an encounter with nature, but by a catastrophic failure from within. Such a revelation not only deepens the tragedy, but also serves as a sobering reminder of the consequences of overlooking safety in the pursuit of luxury and prestige. Number 2. Mystery of the Missing Victims The Titanic tragedy left many questions unanswered, one of which pertains to the fate of over a thousand passengers and crew whose bodies were never recovered. The ship, known for its grandeur and size, sank in the North Atlantic Ocean in 1912, taking with it more than 500 lives. While around 340 victims were found floating after the sinking, the mystery of the remaining individuals continues to intrigue experts and historians alike. Titanic expert Robert Ballard, renowned for discovering the ship's wreckage in 1985, offers a thought-provoking theory about the missing victims. He suggests that many bodies might still be inside the Titanic, particularly within the confines of the engine room. The engine room, a robust and enclosed space, could potentially have created an environment conducive to preserving the bodies. This theory, while not confirmed, opens up a new perspective on the final resting place of those lost. Ballard's proposition is based on the understanding of underwater preservation. In the deep, cold waters of the Atlantic, the lack of light and low temperatures slow down the decomposition process. This environment, coupled with the protection offered by the ship's structure, could mean that the bodies are relatively well-preserved, even after more than a century. The possibility that the Titanic still holds within it the remains of those who perished is a somber reminder of the disaster's human cost. It underscores the tragedy not just as a historical event, but as a personal catastrophe for the families of those lost. This theory brings a new dimension to the Titanic story, offering a poignant perspective on one of history's most infamous maritime disasters. Number 3. Titanic's Rivet Quality 
Metallurgist. Tim Folk's investigation into the Titanic's construction unearthed a critical flaw that may have accelerated its tragic sinking. His research focused on the iron rivets used to hold the Titanic's steel plates together. These rivets, essential for the structural integrity of the ship, were found to be of substandard quality. Folk discovered that the iron used in these rivets contained a high concentration of slag, a byproduct of smelting that can make iron brittle and prone to breaking under stress. This revelation about the rivets is particularly significant when considering the Titanic's collision with the iceberg. When the ship struck the iceberg, the force exerted on its hull would have put immense pressure on these rivets. Due to their poor quality, it's likely that they failed to hold the steel plates together effectively, leading to a more rapid influx of water into the ship. In essence, the subpar rivets could have transformed what might have been a survivable incident into a catastrophic failure of the ship's hull. This aspect of the Titanic's construction sheds new light on the broader narrative of its doomed voyage. It suggests that the tragedy was not just a result of the unforeseen encounter with an iceberg, but also a consequence of flawed construction practices. The use of inferior materials in such a critical component of the ship's structure speaks to the oversight and potential negligence of the era's shipbuilding standards. This, coupled with the tragic outcome, underscores the importance of stringent quality control in engineering, a lesson learned too late for the Titanic and its passengers. Number 4. Pack Ice Collision Theory In exploring the tragic sinking of the Titanic, one theory that stands apart is the Pack Ice Collision Theory, proposed by Captain L. M. Collins. This theory challenges the widely accepted notion of the ship colliding with a singular iceberg. Instead, Collins suggests that the Titanic encountered a large field of pack ice. This theory gains credence when considering the nature of the damage sustained by the ship. According to Collins, the extensive damage observed on the Titanic's hull could be more consistent with a continuous scrape against pack ice rather than a single impact with an iceberg. Support for this theory also comes from eyewitness accounts. Some survivors reported hearing a prolonged grinding noise rather than a sharp collision, a detail that aligns more with the idea of the ship moving through a field of ice. Additionally, the lookout's late sighting of the obstacle could be attributed to the difficulty in detecting the extensive low-lying pack ice in the dark, as opposed to a more visible iceberg. Critically, this theory could explain the Titanic's rapid sinking. Continuous contact with pack ice would have caused more widespread damage along the hull, allowing water to flood multiple compartments quickly and hasten the ship's demise. This contrasts with the commonly held belief that the ship hit an iceberg, causing a gash that led to its sinking. This pack ice collision theory, while not as widely recognized as the iceberg theory, offers a plausible alternative explanation for the Titanic's sinking. It prompts a re-evaluation of the events of that fateful night, suggesting a more complex scenario than previously understood. Number 5. Hidden Fire On Board Amid the numerous theories surrounding the Titanic's tragic demise, one particularly compelling notion is that of a hidden fire on board. This theory revolves around a blaze that supposedly started in the ship's coal bunkers, even before it set sail on its ill-fated journey. The existence of a fire on the Titanic isn't mere speculation. Historical records confirm that a fire did indeed break out in one of the coal storage rooms. What makes this theory fascinating is the potential impact this fire might have had on the Titanic's fate. Experts suggest that the fire, burning at extremely high temperatures, could have significantly weakened the steel structure of the ship's hull. The weakened hull would have been more susceptible to damage upon collision with the iceberg, exacerbating the extent of the breach and accelerating the tragic sinking. This fire wasn't a secret to the crew. In fact, it was a known issue, and efforts were made to control it during the voyage. However, the full extent of the fire's impact on the ship's structural integrity remains a subject of debate among Titanic historians. 
While some argue that the fire was a major contributing factor to the disaster, others believe that it played a minor role compared to the iceberg collision. This theory adds a layer of complexity to the Titanic story, suggesting that the disaster was not solely the result of an unfortunate encounter with an iceberg, but possibly a culmination of multiple overlooked factors, including a fire hidden within the ship's depths. It challenges the simplistic narrative of the iceberg being the sole culprit and invites viewers to ponder the possibility of an ignored danger that might have sealed the Titanic's fate. Number 6. John Jacob Astor IV's Tragic Fate John Jacob Astor IV stands as one of the most notable figures aboard the RMS Titanic. Born into the prominent Astor family, he was not only one of the richest men in the world, but also an influential figure in business and real estate. Astor's presence on the Titanic was marked by his status and wealth. That's John Jacob Astor, the richest man on the ship. Making his tragic fate all the more poignant. In April 1912, Astor, accompanied by his young wife Madeline, boarded the Titanic for their return to the United States. The voyage was supposed to be a joyous one, especially as Madeline was pregnant with their child. However, the night of April 14th changed their lives forever. As the Titanic struck the iceberg, the events that unfolded thereafter led to a catastrophic ending for many, including Astor. After the collision, Astor displayed remarkable calmness and composure. He was seen helping his wife into a lifeboat, ensuring her safety. Astor's actions reflected his character, a mix of responsibility and courage. Despite his efforts to join his wife on the lifeboat, he was denied access due to the women and children first policy. The recovery of Astor's body in the icy waters of the North Atlantic was a somber moment. Found several days after the sinking, he was identified by the personal items he had with him, a gold watch, a diamond ring, and a hefty amount of cash symbolizing the wealth he possessed in life. The recovery of his body brought closure to his family, but also highlighted the indiscriminate nature of the tragedy that befell the Titanic, affecting both the rich and the poor alike. Astor's death is not just a tale of loss, but also a reminder of the human element in the Titanic story. Number 7. Titanic Replicas and Cultural Impact the impact of James Cameron's Titanic on popular culture is profound. Released in 1997, this film rekindled a global fascination with the tragic story of the RMS Titanic. More than just a blockbuster, it served as an emotional conduit, allowing audiences to connect with the historical event on a deeply personal level. The movie's success went beyond mere entertainment. It sparked renewed interest in maritime history, and the human stories intertwined with the Titanic's ill-fated voyage. Its portrayal of the ship's opulence, the stark reality of the disaster, and the human drama on board brought a new dimension to the public's understanding of the tragedy. In the wake of the film's success, there has been a surge in efforts to recreate the Titanic experience. Most notable among these is Australian businessman Clive Palmer's ambitious project, Titanic II. This endeavor aims to build a near-exact replica of the original Titanic, albeit with modern safety features and technology. The project, while facing several delays, symbolizes the enduring allure and fascination with the Titanic story. It's not just a venture in luxury cruising, it's a tribute to the engineering marvel that the original ship represented and a reminder of the human stories that were part of its journey. This venture into recreating the Titanic reflects our continued desire to connect with history, understand our past, and perhaps in some way, make peace with one of the most poignant maritime tragedies in human history. Number 8. Engineers' Heroic Sacrifice Amidst the Titanic's tragic saga, the heroism of its engineers, led by Chief Engineer Joseph Bell, stands as a beacon of selfless courage. These men, deeply committed to their duties, played a pivotal role in the ship's final hours. Their actions, largely overshadowed by the disaster's scale, deserve recognition for their bravery and dedication. 
Chief Engineer Joseph Bell and his team of engineers were the unsung heroes during the Titanic's direst moments. When the iceberg struck, these men were deep in the bowels of the ship, managing the steam engines that powered this massive vessel. Unflinchingly, they continued to work even as the Titanic's fate became increasingly grim. Their efforts were focused on keeping the ship's electrical systems running, providing power for lights and the wireless telegraph, which was essential for sending distress signals. This act of unwavering dedication ensured that passengers could find their way to lifeboats and that SOS messages could be transmitted, playing a crucial role in the survival of many. The engineers' decision to remain at their posts, fully aware of the impending doom, is a testament to their character and professionalism. Their sacrifice allowed for the evacuation of passengers, but it came at the ultimate cost. None of the engineering crew survived. The engines kept running until the very end, a haunting reminder of the engineers' steadfastness in the face of catastrophe. As we remember the Titanic, it is crucial to honor these engineers. Their self-sacrifice and commitment under unimaginable pressure were extraordinary. In the darkest of times, their actions provided a glimmer of hope and humanity, an enduring legacy of the human spirit's resilience and dedication. Number 9. Cursed Egyptian Mummy Myth Amidst the many stories surrounding the Titanic, one particularly intriguing tale is that of a cursed Egyptian mummy. This legend claims that the mummy, known as the Unlucky Mummy, was on board the ill-fated ship, influencing its destiny. The story begins with the mummy's discovery in Egypt and its subsequent journey to Europe. The mummy, encased in a coffin adorned with mysterious inscriptions, was said to bring misfortune to those who owned it. It changed hands several times, with each owner reportedly experiencing a series of unfortunate events. This narrative intertwines with the life of journalist William Steed. Steed, a passenger on the Titanic, had previously written about the mummy's curse. He was fascinated by the supernatural and often explored such themes in his writings. It's said that Steed discussed this curse during the voyage, perhaps unwittingly weaving the mummy's legend into the Titanic story. This tale, though captivating, has been debunked over time. The British Museum, which houses a mummy often linked to this myth, confirmed that their artifact never left the museum and certainly wasn't aboard the Titanic. Despite the lack of factual basis, the story of the cursed mummy has endured, perhaps because it adds an element of mystique to the Titanic's tragic tale. It serves as a testament to the human penchant for weaving narratives that intertwine history with folklore, adding layers of intrigue to already compelling events. However, when considering the Titanic story, it's crucial to differentiate between these captivating myths and the ship's real history. Number 10. Captain E.J. Smith's Controversial Decisions The Titanic's tragic sinking on April 14, 1912, has etched a deep mark in history, largely due to the decisions made by its captain, Edward John Smith. Captain Smith, an experienced mariner, faced harsh criticism in the aftermath of the disaster. Central to the controversy was his decision to maintain the ship's speed, despite receiving several iceberg warnings. This decision, often scrutinized, was not unusual for the era, reflecting the prevailing maritime practices and the immense confidence placed in modern engineering. The era's transatlantic voyages were marked by a race to achieve faster crossing times, often under immense commercial pressure. This context is vital in understanding Captain Smith's actions. His adherence to the speed, although questioned today, was in line with the standard practices of the time. The belief in the unsinkability of ships like the Titanic further compounded the sense of security. However, the unfolding of events post-collision reveals a more complex scenario. While Captain Smith did attempt to manage the crisis, reports from survivors indicate moments of apparent indecision and shock. The chaotic situation, exacerbated by the insufficient number of lifeboats, made an effective response more challenging. This shortage, a critical factor in the disaster's high death toll, was not a decision made by Captain Smith alone but a flaw in the ship's design, 
approved by regulatory bodies of the time. Furthermore, Captain Smith's experience and reputation prior to the Titanic's maiden voyage were exemplary. His career had been distinguished, with no prior incidents, suggesting that his decisions aboard the Titanic were not out of negligence or incompetence, but rather a tragic alignment of circumstances and adherence to the era's maritime norms. In re-evaluating Captain Smith's role, it becomes evident that the Titanic disaster was not the result of a single individual's actions. It was a complex interplay of factors, including technological overconfidence, regulatory shortcomings, and a series of unfortunate decisions and circumstances. This broader perspective sheds light on the tragedy in a way that moves beyond placing sole blame on Captain Smith, recognizing the multifaceted nature of maritime disasters and the changes in safety practices they often precipitate. Thanks for watching, and while you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos. I'll see you there.